Hello all, welcome to this mini lecture in the CME 694 Engineering Rheology course. The topic for discussion today is the characterization of a body cream and body lotion. Let's get started. We as consumers have various delicate expectations of cosmetic products in terms of skin feel and texture, consistency and greasiness, packaging and stability of the product. These parameters have a crucial impact on our buying preferences. Hence, cosmetic manufacturers have to be aware of these facts and figures to meet consumer demands. Most cosmetic creams and lotions are complex multiphase emulsions that are formulated with almost similar compositions. However, these two kinds of cosmetics are substantially different in their primary function. A cosmetic lotion is basically used to care lightly and maintain the balance of oil and water on the skin. It should be smoothly applied to the skin and not contain a high portion of oil to penetrate the skin easily. On the other hand, cosmetic cream has slightly different functions from lotion. It is supposed to supply enough moisture and nutrients into the skin and at the same time form a thin protective film on the skin to prevent water loss. Thus, creams are high in oil content allowing the products to have high consistency. Furthermore, creams are very rich and moist in actual skin feel. In order to understand how these cosmetics get their characteristic properties, it is important to get familiar with the functional classification of the ingredients that go into making body creams and lotions as they have a profound effect on their rheological properties. This table summarizes the functional classification of ingredients contained in body cream and body lotion. As can be seen from the table, a substantial portion of whole ingredients is acted as an emollient. Emollients, also commonly referred as moisturizers, are products that help to soften the external layers of the skin. Most emollients are forms of oil or grease such as mineral oil, squalene and ranonine. They work by increasing the ability of the skin to hold water, providing the skin with a layer of oil and to, to prevent water loss and lubricating the skin. Even though the composition of body cream and body lotion is highly analogous, Body cream contains greater amounts of waxes, solid oil based ingredients, polymers and thickening agents in order to differentiate the degree of greasiness and viscosity from those of body lotion. These materials play an important role in determining the rheological properties of cosmetics than do the cos aqueous constituents. Now let us move on to the, how the characterization of these products is conducted for actual application conditions. The image on the left is an advanced areometric expansion system ARES. It is a well-known strain control rheometer that is capable of subjecting a test material to either a dynamic or a steady shear strain and then measuring the resultant torque values expended by the sample in response to the imposed shear strain. In order to investigate the steady shear flow behaviors of body cream and body lotion, the authors first performed steady rate sweep measurements using an ARES equipped with a parallel plate fixture. These rate sweep tests in steady shear flow fields were carried out at a fixed temperature of 35 degrees Celsius which can be assumed to be the actual skin temperature and over a wide range of shear rates. Secondly, dynamic frequency sweep measurements were conducted with a parallel plate fixture in order to evaluate the linear viscoelastic behaviors in small amplitude oscillatory shear flow fields. These frequency sweep experiments were carried out at an isothermal condition of 35 degrees Celsius or a broad range of angular frequencies and at constant strain amplitudes of 1% and 0.2% for body cream and body lotion respectively. Yield stress as a measure of primary skin feel. The figure on the left shows the flow curves which is a representation of shear stress as a function of shear rate for body cream and body lotion at 35 degrees Celsius. For both body cream and body lotion, the shear stress tends to approach a constant limiting value as a decrease in shear rate towards zero, indicating that these two products exhibit a finite magnitude of yield stress. It is also clearly observed that the shear stress of a body cream is approximately 10 times larger than that of a body lotion over a whole range of shear rates tested. These results are more dramatically manifested when plotting the shear viscosity as a function of shear stress rather than shear rate as can be seen on the figure on the right. Two distinctive regions are clearly seen. The existing region of yield stress reflected by the viscosity that continues to rise at a relatively lower range of shear stresses. And second, the shear thinning region where the shear viscosity is substantially decreased with increasing shear stress. 
It is also seen that the flow curve for body cream exists on the right hand side of body lotion, implying that the yield stress of body cream is larger than that of body lotion. Yield stress is an essential rheological property for cosmetics. When body cream or body lotion is taken from the containers and placed onto the human skin, the content should keep the shape maintained for a while without flowing down from the skin. Also, the minimum required force to extrude or pour contents from the product's containers is directly related to the primary sensory field that consumers experience during actual usage. Yield stress would also exert an influence on the selection of containers during the process of manufacturing. That is, a wide op open jar is usually selected as a cream container whereas a narrow open bottle is often used for a lotion. Shear thinning viscosity as a measure of spreadability. The figure shows the shear dependence of steady shear viscosity for a body cream and body lotion at 35 degrees Celsius. While the Newtonian re flow region is not observed at low shear rates, the steady shear viscosity of body cream and body lotion is sharply decreased as an increase in the shear rate over the whole range of shear rates tested. These two products exhibit a pronounced non-Newtonian shear thinning behavior. Also, it can be clearly observed that the steady shear viscosity of a body cream is almost 10 times greater than that of a body lotion. This shear thinning rheological feature is closely related with spreadability, which is regarded as one of the most important properties when cosmetics are applied to the human skin under actual usage conditions. When spreading in one direction, cosmetics should be smoothly spread onto the skin forming a thin and even layer. Therefore, a shear thinning behavior becomes bound to be essential, leading to a decrease in shear viscosity as the shear rate is increased. Also, consumers will accept products that are easy to apply. Linear viscoelasticity as a measure of storage stability. On the figures on the left and right, shows the storage modulus and loss modulus as a function of angular frequency for a body cream and body lotion respectively at 35 degrees Celsius. As can be seen in the left figure, both the storage modulus and loss modulus of a body cream exhibit a qualitatively similar behavior over the whole range of angular frequencies tested. These two moduli are almost constant or slightly increased with an increase in angular frequency. Meanwhile, the storage modulus and loss modulus of a body lotion is increased as an increase in the angular frequency, with the loss modulus showing a slight decrease at an angular frequency range higher than 10 radians per second. For both body cream and body lotion, the storage modulus is always greater than the loss modulus over an entire range of angular frequencies studied. Meaning that the linear viscoelastic behaviors of body cream and body lotion are dominated by an elastic nature rather than a viscous nature. When cosmetics are displayed on the store's shelf or stored in a warehouse or room where only a small stimulus or deformation is applied to the products, it is advisable for cosmetic products to have a solid-like elastic nature rather than a liquid-like viscous nature in order to keep the shape and structure of the products preserved, leading to staying in a stable condition for a longer time. In conclusion, body cream and body lotion are regarded as viscoelastic materials that have a finite magnitude of yield stress. The yield stress of body cream is approximately 10 times larger than that of a body lotion. Body cream and body lotion exhibit a pronounced non-Newtonian shear thinning flow behavior. The linear viscoelastic behaviors of body cream and body lotion are dominated by an elastic nature rather than a viscous nature. This work involves rheological characterization under actual application conditions and also provides a detailed understanding of how rheological properties are related to product features that matter the most to consumers. However, the analysis is limited to only one kind of body cream and lotion. The study does not clearly explain the differences in the rheological properties by quantifying the differences in the amounts of their key ingredients.
future work could involve comparative analysis of different types of body creams. Also, analysis that clearly explains the difference in the rheological properties based on the differences in the amounts of particular ingredients that go into making these cosmetic products. Finally, these are the references that helped me in preparing and delivering this mini lecture and also thanks to Professor Sean Sanders and Ricardo for helping me build the foundation of engineering rheology. Finally, with this, I would like to thank you all for your attention and see you next time.